Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to another episode of Wombs with a View, Musings with Jenny and Sylvia. I am Sylvia. I'm Jenny. And we have a special guest today, our friend and our colleague, uh, Mika Rock, who is a doula along with Jenny and I at Rock the Cradle. And we're so happy to have you here. Welcome, Mika. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. You can't even understand. We can because we almost <laughs> missed you. Last week we were supposed to do this show and Sylvia was called to a birth and I was there hanging with Mika and I couldn't figure out the technology. So we said, forget it, we'll do it next week. And and at the moment, Mika has a client that uh, that almost took her away from us. <laughs> that can call okay. anytime. <laughs> yeah, you, you ladies went on call with me this yeah. morning. So thank you for that, <laughs> for your flexibility. <laughs> Well, we did have another episode, you know, ready just in case, but uh, we're so happy to have you here. And uh, these are discussions that we have all, all the time as a team. So we're really happy to bring them, bring them here on the show. And uh, through our stories, we're gonna tell you some stories and anecdotes and Mika's, Mika is really into, well, we all are as doulas, but, uh, very knowledgeable about birth hormones. And uh, if you did not know, Jenny and Mika just finished their hypnobirthing training recently. And hypnobirthing is all about letting the birth hormones mm -hmm. flow and not interrupting the, uh, the natural, I guess, the process of birth. Uh, so that's, uh, and it's a, it's a super important part of birth that I don't think a lot of people know about. Yeah, and I find yeah. that in our classes, Sylvia, when we talk about hormones, many, many have like this aha moment yeah. where they realize, oh, so this is how it works. And it really helps um, to step into labor with more confidence. So I'm super happy that we're going to be talking about it today. Yeah. Um, what can I say about, uh, I definitely felt, I mean, when I know the big hormone we're going to be talking about today is oxytocin. And uh, I know in my first birth, I could really feel the, the flow and the increase of the oxytocin and getting into my bubble. And I know we're gonna talk about all of this, uh, but it's not, it's not easy for everyone to, particularly I think in, in hospital births where there's lots of things going on to be able to get to that state. And I know uh, you both of you are nodding your heads, like, right, mm -hmm. we, see this, we see this all the time. Jenny, who had a home birth, that's a totally different, you know, that is letting the birth hormones flow because there's no, the carrot of the epidural is not dangling in front of you. There were no, there was no inhibitions. That's what it was. Not even with any kind of hormone, any other kind of hormones that, you know, caused me to, to swear and you know really take up as much space as I wanted to. I it, it was my it was my home. I didn't have to hold back the women that were there and it was all women except for my husband. Everything was flowing very nicely. Flowing. Nothing to hold back. Yeah. Yeah. So Mika, let's let's just jump right in. What's you wanted uh, me to share about my births too yes, before I jump go in. Ahead, as, yes. as you're speaking, share a story. I had share a story. Two very different births. My first birth was an unmedicated natural birth with midwives. And my other birth was a C-section. So I really got to see the both ends of the spectrum. Was it a Maybe, planned, was it a planned cesarean? It wasn't, it wasn't. Because okay. my daughter was breech and we were trying an ECV, external Catholic inversion, which basically means that you're trying, a doctor is moving the baby physically. And that triggered my labor. Mm -hmm. So I was not expecting to go into labor that day, but I did. Ah. So I was getting contractions and they were telling me your daughter is still breached. The protocol here is a C-section. So maybe I'll just speak to how I felt at the end of both of these births. Cause yeah. I find that's really the profound takeaway that I can bring from this. So after my son's birth, I was high. Mm -hmm. I could take over the world. I was so empowered that it's, it's not something I can really, you know, if you felt it and you've been there, you know it. It's this rock, oh, yeah. star, it's amazing. rock star moment. <laughs> and after my daughter's birth, it was different because I did not have that same flow of hormones through my body when having a C-section. 
And I was aware of that. So I did lots and lots of skin to skin with her after. And we'll talk about that soon and why that is so beneficial and important. And I find that only after a few days, I actually was able to feel that mm -hmm. feel good place. And that bonding with my daughter was, was created. And with my son, it was so instant. Yeah. Right. So, so it's, it's such a different uh, experience as a mother. Um, and, and now when I'm a birth doula and I step into the birth room and I get to accompany others in these moments, I, you know, you, you taste the flavor of how they step into those moments of bonding. And what can I say? There is, there is something to oxytocin when it's been there throughout the labor. It's, mm. it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's powerful. Well, for those who might not know, oxytocin, we call it the love hormone, and it's there when you conceive your baby. It is uh, one of the hormones that allows you to have, start having contractions. The higher your oxytocin levels, the more, the stronger and more frequent your contractions are to allow you to birth your baby. And then after, I was looking if I had a doll around here, after you give birth, your oxytocin levels are so high uh, when you're giving birth, on not, a, not a planned cesarean, but a vaginal uh, birth, that you, know, you look at your baby and it's the bonding hormone. So you look at those little babies and they're all squishy and filled with, you know, the, <laughs> they're not at they're not at their visually most stunning, but I mean, there are, you just gave birth and you just love that. Like you just fall in love. And that's this why we call it the love hormone and that bonding, those bonding moments. So I think uh, we, we see it as doulas, different levels of oxytocin create different experiences mm -hmm. for women. Mm. And then really understanding what supports the flow of oxytocin. Mm can help yeah. us can help us in, in the way I think knowing that hormones have an effect on our emotions on our behavior on our thoughts and they are triggered by the environment and the and mm -hmm. it's it also goes the other way around like if if I get into a moment of stress during labor it means that adrenaline is kicking in adrenaline and oxytocin they compete they yeah. can't really coexist uh, they they want to go to the same receptors, which is like a key to a lock. So if they the oxytocin locks in, then there's no space for adrenaline. But if the adrenaline locks in, then oxytocin is is not available for you. So just understanding that and creating why do we always talk as doulas is creating your birth bubble, your birth mm. stone, going to labor land, all of these ways of talking about that dark soft environment and even my voice changes when I start talking about it but I have a different voice in the birth room you want to say something well I feel like I'm in school I'm in science class and, and teacher <laughs> Mrs. Rock because Mika yeah. was a science teacher so that's one of the reasons we were very happy to have her here could you tell us what the heck is a hormone of course so hormones are our chemical messengers in our bodies and they origin from um, a gland, in the case of oxytocin, that's in our brain, our pituitary gland. And they, through the bloodstream, they go to a target, which is our uterus. During labor, it's really interesting to know that when oxytocin starts to flow, our uterus actually creates more receptors, more mm -hmm. of these locks to invite more oxytocin, to create more contractions to allow this snowball effect. If you think of this big snowball rolling, once labor is going, nothing can stop it, mm. really. It's, it's really strong when you're, we, we kind of say when labor is well established, when you're fully, all your senses are gathered in words. And yoga teacher Jenny, when I say the word pratyahara, mm. which is one of the eight limbs of yoga, and often when I teach this to my clients who have some yoga background, we talk about this. It's all about gathering your senses inwards, which is what pra Pratyahara is really all about. So this is a Sanskrit word from yoga. But when we're in that place, in that zone where we're able to gather all our senses inwards, we're allowing oxytocin, we're allowing the hormone to flow really well from the brain to the uterus. And guess what happens then? The baby is creating more pressure on the cervix, more pressure on the cervix, more hormones are secreted from the brain because I don't know how many words I should add, but you, you, you know prostaglandins if you're a doula, right? But our audience maybe doesn't know what that means. It's in the sperm. 
Guys, the prostaglandin is naturally occurring in sperm. This is why we tell you to have lots of sex before. Yeah, it's a way to, to start stimulating the cervix to help the cervix soften. And from the inside, the baby's creating pressure, and that pressure also creates prostaglandins. Mm. So more prostaglandins, more oxytocin, more contractions, more pressure. And that's our positive feedback. In biology, mm -hmm. we talk about a positive feedback. And I like to talk about the snowball effect because it just makes sense. We can vision what that actually means. And in our labors, we want that to happen. So what do we do to allow that to, to um, all play out for us? One of the ways is having a doula. <laughs> <laughs> Right? It helps. It helps for sure because we're going into the unknown, right? But a doula knows what birth is. We've been to the places that our clients have birthed and can be somewhat of a, I don't say a protector, but to, to yeah, I, I like that word. Yeah, Protect the space. I, yeah, but I wonder too. Space. You said you said a moment, and maybe it was an exaggeration, or maybe it's exactly what you meant, Mika. But you said when labor is flowing, there's when oxytocin is flowing, there's nothing that can interrupt labor, but but adrenaline can, can it not? If we're in a in the hospital, for example, and we don't have our protector or whatever the scenario is, and um, tigers, is it is it uh, birthing from within that talks the about cyber birth? tiger? You know, like just the yeah. idea of somebody interrupting. Uh, I always tell the story mm -hmm. in the rock cradle classes or in any birth education that I'm about doing. The cat. Well, I usually say a deer in the forest. It yeah, I use that one. The jungle, the gazelle. The, the oxytocin is flowing really, really well, and she's in her groove. And, you know, I say she, she's gone to the forest to birth alone. And I say to the clients, it doesn't mean that I'm saying you should go to the forest and birth alone. But this deer has done that because that's what deers do. And everything's going really well. And then all of a sudden she hears a branch crack. That cracking branch is going mm. to, is it not produce adrenaline and fight or flight or freeze? And, and when you're scared enough, it, it will slow Your down. Your birth will stop. So is there I a wanna... point in that process that, that maybe no, like actually things are slowing so well that no, even that tiger entering the room, would, you would still birth? So yes, and I want to talk to that. And I learned this recently from uh, Dr. Sarah Buckley, which is an Australian mm. uh, family doctor who's trained in obstetrics, who is a hormone expert. And, and she has an amazing book too that I recommend, Gentle Birth, Gentle Mothering. Um, and she talks about, these are, for me, it's a recent discovery really, but so when the snowball is little and you're in early labor and you're still at home, anything will interrupt you mm. really and can stall labor. Adrenaline, just even a thought can trigger mm -hmm. a stall in labor or a sound or just being uncomfortable or feeling anxious about what's going to happen. All these things can create a situation where contractions will not continue. But this is, as you said before, it's rooted in a survival mechanism that we have that if we're threatened during labor, then we're actually going to stop the labor, move to a safe space and allow things to mm -hmm. pick up again. Let's say we're a gazelle in the forest that's being threatened by a tiger, sees the tiger, stops the labor, she moves, and only when she feels safe again, labor will start. Well, we're animals. We're like, we are animals. We are mammals. Right? I mean, we are mammals. mammals. And then that, 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 I, and I have seen this happen in the birth room where there's too many things going on and labor has not been established, like you know, just yet. And then things just stop and then we start from zero again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I say, well, I say we, but it's really the mother, right? <laughs> it's us too, right? Because yeah. we were there. We <laughs> were, yeah. yeah. Can I ask about you but guys? I just about... want to finish. Sorry, to say you finish. About... Yeah, yeah. Because you asked a very good question, I find. So there is a moment in time where labor is such a big snowball and it's rolling mm. so well that if you'll stop because of the tiger, you're actually not going to be able to get away. You're not going to be able to run. You, you have to give birth to, to be safe in that moment. So there is a time in labor. If you arrive at the hospital and you're, let's say, seven, eight centimeters, you're, yeah. you don't see anybody. You don't really hear anybody. Mm -hmm. And adrenaline can actually get things moving faster. Yeah. And, and that's the new thing. that well, I, they do work together. They work yes, together at the end of labor. Yeah. And well, I, that happened to me, Mita. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say, my my second and third labors, I arrived and I was eight centimeters, and then the second one I was 10 centimeters, 
uh, or nine, nine and a half, whatever. And no one could have stopped me. I was on the floor in the hallway of the hospital. The baby's coming. And they're like, come this way, come this way, get your clothes off. And they were like all panicky. The baby's coming, right? And yeah, then, yeah. And stop. nothing, nobody could say anything or do anything that yeah. would move you away from that place of birthing your baby. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I think that's an important uh, add on. And also to know that in the breathing, when we breathe our babies out, when we birth our babies, adrenaline does play mm -hmm. a role there mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. We get more alert, we're more aware of what's going on, and we get a lot of energy from it. Yeah, I always welcome it at the end. And I tell clients, we want that adrenaline during out throughout labor, we don't want the adrenaline, but in, but at the end, we do want it, it picks you up because people are you're going to tell yourself if you're if you're going to be birthing, or you birth recently, and let us know your experiences in the comments, we want to hear but, uh, you know, I, my recent client this past week, she got to a point where, how am I going to push my baby out? I'm so tired. And I'm like, oh, wait, that it, you, you will get the adrenaline. And it's a totally different experience when we start to push our babies out. Completely different. And you will. You get that strength. right? Yes. And you can count on it because, it, again, it's our hormones where yeah. our bodies know what to do. We just need to release and let it happen. Oh, can I, I, I was going to interrupt you earlier and then because I knew I'd forget. So I did forget. But then I had another question, if you don't mind. Um, if you if you could explain the up like I always think of it as like an upgrading of hormones So again talking about natural birth versus unmedicated birth when it comes to the ejection reflex We're talking about baby coming out and we're talking about um, uh, the level of pain that we'll feel and um, If we have not sort of interrupted the natural flow of hormones with medication how nature sort of up levels the the hormones that help us deal with pain whereas when we kind of block the hormones we don't get do you understand my question of Could course i do that? and i have an example recently i had a client she got to nine centimeters and she really knew she wanted the epidural and that was really clear from our prenatals and through all, all our discussions she knew so she got the epidural at nine and it created a whole other uh, breathing out your baby. That's how I like to refer to pushing, really. So when I say that, that's what I'm talking to, the second phase of labor. <laughs> she had a very different experience, I believe, than what she would have if she wouldn't have taken that epidural. So I, I really saw it in front of my eyes, where the body, when you have an epidural, in your body, what it does, it gives you a block from your spine and down. And it's not just the sensations that are blocked. It's your movement, it's your muscles, and it's also the flow of hormones. And just speaking of uh, Dr. Sarah Buckley, she's writing a PhD on this question as we speak. So it will be really interesting to see her research when it comes out. Um, but I think as a doula, I can really see the difference between a second phase labor that is unmedicated to a second phase labor that is there's just more power in the body when we're unmedicated and we also in this phase we get to push through the intensity it's mm. very different than active labor or the thinning and opening phase of labor where it's all about letting go and releasing and finding the way for the body to relax in the breathing out, in the pushing phase, it is full on you working mm -hmm. and there is more control and you can actually, you don't feel the sensation of intensity or pain as much because you're actually going right through it. Hmm. Now let's go back okay. because <laughs> you and I, we have been, and Jenny, we've all been to birth where they use synthetic hormones. Uh, here in Canada, the oxytocin, the brand is called Sinto uh, in French, Ocytocin. In the American books, it's called Pit or Pitocin. So we get clients who arrive at the hospital, maybe their waters have broken, or maybe they have small little contractions still. And sometimes, many times now I find, the hospitals are saying, okay, let's give you some Sinto. So they are, we're here, we're talking about letting those birth hormones flow. Now, these are synthetic birth hormones. So I'm assuming they don't flow the same way. No, they don't. Mm. I mean, they I already actually... knew the answer, Mika, but I want you to know <laughs> it. We all know all of this, right? We're just having yeah. fun 
Yeah, revealing chatting. It, tell us, revealing yeah. it together. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I like the way you talk about it, Sylvia. You say Sintosin or Pitocin doesn't have any love. Right? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It's it's just a whole other experience for the birthing person. And also physiologically what happens. So in, in scientific words, when we talk about hormones, we talk about the cascade of hormones, mm. which is, if you can think of it, it, it's a cycle. So the oxytocin gets the beta endorphins going. The beta endorphins are our feel good hormones that mm. give us a big reward. It's like 200 times bigger than any drug that we can think of. Like even we talk about morphine, heroin, Beta endorphins are stronger than that. So oxytocin really creates that environment where we can completely be in this euphoric place during labor. When we put in syntocin, the beta endorphins, no matter how our threshold of intensity and pain rises, they don't come in the same way. Our brain doesn't cooperate in the same way. So often what we see with syntocin is that in epidural does accompany these births. Not always. I've also accompanied labors, 18-hour yeah. labors, 20-hour yeah. labors where no epitocin have, have, has been introduced and figuring out ways to um, uh, get through the surges is possible. There's so many different ways that as doulas, this is, this is our bread and butter. This is what we're good at. <laughs> figuring out together with you how to cope with whatever shows up in labor. Whatever intensity, whatever discomfort, we're there to help you and figure it out. But I find that it's a very different, like the word that comes to me is flavor, but it's not just flavor. It's the sensation that is happening with Pitocin. Sometimes I like to talk about it like sound waves. So oxytocin, the love hormone, is more like sinus waves, if this makes sense to people. This is my science teacher coming out again. <laughs> But they're smooth and they're kind of, they, they, they have this roundness to them and we can figure them out a little more. Pitocin, I find it's like these, they shoot up, there's this plateau of intensity and then they come right down. Like there is something that is, and sometimes they shoot out through the chart. Like you're looking mm. at the contractions on the monitor and you can see, whoa, like how is she even dealing with, you know, these spikes that are coming in? So it's a very different um, experience in your body and, and during your labor, but it does speed things up. And we just talked about that a while ago, mm. Sylvia. So mm -hmm. Pitocin, mm -hmm. one of the reasons it's so widely used is because it gets things moving. So yes, how yes, unfortunately. I mean, it, and, and there are some downsides to that. You know, I don't want to say it's not, you know, it, but it's become protocol I find in so many hospitals I mean I had a second time mom come in in labor and the first thing they said is oh does she have her pit her pitocin yet her cinto and I'm like what she's she's contracting she's a second time mom this is going to be happening so fast well we'll let the doctor see about that and I'm like no she doesn't need it she gave birth within an hour right it was I was like it's just so much of the protocol that and, and it just so that you know it doesn't always have to be so. And it's one of the reasons why, like when, when we talk about induction, why we try the best we can to avoid being induced because quite often yeah. that is how an induction happens. And as Mika's explaining the spike and plateau, it's, yeah. it's usually quite honestly that the contractions are so unbearable. They're bearable when you have your natural harm it's intense, but you have your natural hormones coming to support you. But if you've had that kick of in intense uh, contractions, it's very, very hard to not then take the epidural, to not then take more of this. And then this intervention, there's a few times where we've talked about snowballs or cascades mm -hmm. and Mika, you've used it in a different sense than I'm used to. I usually talk about the cascade of interventions, but you talked about the cascade or flow of hormones. Oh, that's yeah. a much that's a much more pleasant one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's really to make sense of how a positive feedback works. It's the same in breastfeeding, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's also a snowball effect. It's it's mm -hmm. also the more we breastfeed, the more we stimulate our breasts, the more milk we'll have. It's it's really the same uh, the same way our body mm -hmm. works. So, so another question for you, Mika. Uh, is it right to say that when we 
do get the synthetic hormones, it disrupts our natural flow of hormones. So the endorphins are not working to their optimal levels. Does it stop the endorphins from working? Yes, it that's does. a short answer. <laughs> right, simple yeah. as that. That's why labor becomes so much more difficult when we are induced, right? And we are on the, that synthetic, uh, those synthetic hormones. It's much harder. Yeah, because yeah, we're kind of on our own. We don't get that reward system of endorphins that creates this. It really allows us to, to move through labor with more ease. It, it's, mm. And if, if ever um, someone who is watching us has experienced it, it's, it's really when we say labor land, that's the endorphins, they're the ones who help us get there. Even though oxytocin also allows us to feel, you know, uh, love and good and connected to the, the people with us, to ourselves, to our babies. Um, and all of these things can still happen in an induction and they can still happen after a C-section. It's just, I, I wanted to say about skin to skin, skin mm. to skin, once the baby's born is one of the best ways to invite oxytocin, yeah. both for mom and partner. So it really, one of the things I, t I tell all my clients, lots of skin to skin and not just the first days, the first weeks. It's so, yeah, it's so right. yummy. It's so yummy to have your, your child on on you. So when we say skin to skin, it's just baby and diaper on you topless with a blanket on, on top. And you just, you just be. be. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah. We miss, I miss those days with my little babies just on me for a long time. And like new moms will say, Oh my God, just like the baby's been on me for so long. And I remember feeling that way too, but there is, we bat like bask in that, the, the oxytocin hormone after birth. Yeah, so much love. Mm. What a great conversation. I know we only have uh, maybe a minute or two left, uh, Mika. Is there any, what, what tips could you give to our listeners here who are listening live? Thank you, Andrew, for your comment. Lots of information, she says. Thanks for sharing. If you have questions and while you're catching the replay, put them in the chat. We're always in there and we will we'll answer them. So before we go, how do we let these hormones flow? Hormones. So I have a little list, if that's okay. <laughs> Choose your care provider. Here in Montreal, uh, your care provider is where you're gonna give birth. So know about your choice, understand what it implies. Then when closer to your due date or your estimated time of birth, let your labor start spontaneously. Really allow a big window of time where you're just doing things that make you happy, really, because mm -hmm. oxytocin also comes when we're relaxed and calm and happy. Mm -hmm. When in labor, stay at home as long as possible. Remember that seven, eight centimeters walking through those doors and you can't really hear anything ah, and you're just going to give birth? Yeah. That's the kind of let your hormones flow moment. Um, so get your environment to be as calm and safe and uninterrupted as possible, whatever that can look like for you and wherever you choose to give birth, including having that doula join you to help you with that and help your partner <laughs> figure that out with her. So I'm just going to say in a word, partner and doula are a great team together. So we, we, we're, we're there to figure that environment piece out with you. Um, and then, as I said before, skin to skin, lots of skin to skin. And if you choose to breastfeed, breastfeeding, a happy hormones, prolactin, oxytocin, let it flow. Yeah, let it flow, let it flow. I was just thinking <laughs> thing, break out into song. Let it flow, let it flow. <laughs> Don't hold it back anymore. Aww. <laughs> Once you have your babies, you'll be singing that song for years. <laughs> Don't hold back. Yeah. Don't just... hold it back. Just let it flow. That's going to be our theme song, our Rock the Cradle theme song. Well, what I'm, I, the time always goes by so fast. It always does. Thank you so much, Mika. Uh, we can find Mika, well, at rockthecradle.ca. Uh, we can find her on her Facebook page, at Mika Rock. 
Mika and Jenny, do you want to plug your hypnobirthing sessions somewhere here? Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, actually, tomorrow night on uh, on Zoom, Mika and I will both be there hosting a free info session. We have quite a few families that are already signed up. It's on Zoom. There is illimited space, and uh, we're going to be talking about the the benefits and just exactly what hypnobirthing is because it's it's quite different from a lot of the other uh, classes that you can take, uh, and it is a different kind of commitment, etc. But it's uh, it's really incredible and amazing. So our our sessions, our group sessions, will start up. They will be every Thursday, each Thursday in October for five weeks. So uh, tomorrow night, if you want to catch us and just kind of see if it's right for you and your partner, it's a perfect opportunity to do that. So you can. It is a different training. It is a training unto itself. Just so you know, mm -hmm. it is a technique. It is one tool among many. So I am so happy that Jenny and Mika have uh, delved into this because uh, it is it is needed. It is needed. Yeah. So tomorrow on Zoom and you can, uh, Jenny will put the uh, link to that in the comments after the show. Awesome. If you need or want to move your body, well, Jenny does a lot of also prenatal classes and postnatal if you're watching us and you already have your babies. So she can also, well, you jennyb.yoga, jennybyoga.com, here we go, uh, for a list of classes. If you are looking for the support, if you would like to have a doula or know more about uh, working with Mika or Ida on our team, we also have monthly open houses. The next one is tonight. Uh, I'll go put that link in the comments. Why not? And if not, you can check on the Rock the Cradle site. Uh, we also have our regular prenatal classes, which cover uh, birth, labor, birth, delivery, feeding, and newborn care. So we've got a lot of resources for you out there and uh, lots more of this amazing information to set you up for the most positive birth possible. That's what we're That's why we're here. It is our purpose and our passion to help you. So thank you for listening. Mika, thank you for joining yeah, thank us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. We're so me. happy. Thank you, Universe, for allowing us to uh, to come on because we weren't sure and uh, if we were going to be here with Mika. Yeah, my doula bag is packed and I'm ready to leave any moment. So. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> happy I'll birthing. Go. Happy hormone flowing birth. Oh, thank yeah. You. And we go live every Wednesday. So we'll be here. Jenny and I will be here with you next week. And uh, on Wednesday, oh, we'll say on Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's a mistake there. Yeah, on Wednesday. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here, and we'll catch you next week. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.